Hello there, everyone, and thank you for rejoining me here in Old World Blues. I'm your host, Mr. Royal Lover, but brick by brick. Admittedly, the Old World was to thank for part of its splendor. While the Brahmin barons had invested heartily into its security, much of the prison stood for 200 years. For when people, not unlike the barons, had built it for a similar purpose. While the Oroyan army pushed the Maxac defenders back to the prison's walls, they were careful not to lay siege to the prison itself. Both sides wished to avoid a second breakout, so Maxac surrendered soon after their defeat became apparent. Now the Oroyan council was forced to reckon with the prisoners. It seemed logical to simply place a prison under management and continue its function. It had proved a strong economic backbone for Maxec, and the fear of breakout seemed far less likely while the prison benefited a royal. The risk was nevertheless present, however. It seemed to many that the prison could simply be shut down, with the prisoners either executed or returned to the communities. The benefits outweigh the risks, send the prisoners to work. That kind of thinking is what caused the first breakout. Um, we already get 40-some. You know what? I think I chose this one last time. Let's do this one. The Doomsday Druid. There is a much point documenting the man's ramblings here. He talks for hours on end, most of which he has spent lamenting the burning, burning forest, identifying it as a clear sign of the end times. While it's the first we've seen of this type of Doomsday Preacher, we doubt he's alone. On one hand, it would be a sound plan to make an example out of him. The doctrine he preaches is no doubt what caused the Packer Wars to begin raiding your territory. However, a threatening approach is warranted as well. If we manage to bring him on, on side, he might be able to persuade other Packers that the fire wasn't our doing. Punish him for the role he's played. We need to be reasonable about this. Well, right now, we can assassinate Dimitri or overpower Nagor, but what is this? Packers, Packers, Packers. Gain coercion with the Packers. For caramel increase. We can try that one, maybe. Um, gain influence. I guess I'll try to get more influence with the Packers then. Stability is always nice to get, so. Of course, we're still at war with them, and we did actually, I did go back at the end of the last episode, and we did the war, and we actually did this without Khan's commands. Without Khan's commands. Uh, pretty fairly in okay, like so. Right now, we're trying to get here and circle division. I doubt we can, but you never know. Um, let's try to do that too. That would be delightful. Hop out there as you can. There you go. Now, I guess I'm attacking robots. Stop wasting time and energy and most importantly, equipment. Oh, we got a little dark over here. Nice. Alright, so can I just take northern reaches? That's kind of nice, kid. We all do that. And we're doing Doors War Bands right now as well. Let's see, right here. Of course, if you're running this game, please go right ahead. I've read this before, so there you go. War's Aftermath. After a grueling campaign, we finally managed to bring the Packers territory under control. The victory is far more than hollow, considering that we had not desire for this war in the beginning in the first place. We already knew that fully retreating from this territory isn't a realistic option. The Packers' wars have either been slain or surrendered, but retreating now would only allow them to prepare for a, sound or a potential second attack. The wars we've captured have been mysteriously silent on what caused the attack, as the civilians question in the encampments we've uncovered. If we're to prevent a second Packer attack and avoid an even greater conflict, an investigation into the Packer society is a necessity. Because of the darkest part of the council members' hearts, they know that they could just kill them all. A mystery. Enter four ways. Hmm. It's not bad. Keep forward training. Uh, trade rest stops. <coughs> Excuse me. Sadly, much of the infrastructure in our territory has begun to decay, deterring traders from entering our lands. Investigating or investing in the rest stops along the road to alleviate this somewhat. Oh, are we in hearts and minds? The native packers are barely will barely speak to Regarius and let alone give them the information we need. These groups were already extremely tight knit, and the devastation brought to their home has only made them more reclusive. Most carry small totems and trinkets around with them and spend their time either hunting and gathering or attending to their woodland homes. Our search for information in these communities must answer a few key questions. We still don't have a clear picture of what led to their attack or an explanation for the flames that were sighted that same morning. In a situation as complex as this, there's a number of ways to approach this issue. Offered to build trust, because Dimitri is good karma. Massive influence. Midnight capping, kidnapping should help. Recruit locals into the army. That's not bad. But let's do this one because we send 75 support equipment, but we get massive influence, which is not much, but whatever. From a peace. We lose a lot of war support. Wow. Kill them all. Survey battlefields. Interrogate the prisoners. Yeah, we'll probably do that too. Um, I don't want to lose any more stability, but we probably will. Packers. Lose coercion. Gain influence with the Packers. Might as well. And we'll do this at least once. 48%. I don't want to lose any more war support, really. But 50 PP is hard to pass up. Why not? Uh, but this here. Dwarves war bands. Uh, trader rest stops. Supplying demand. Uh, the weapons may normally be for the army, but the Chitsa has a clever idea in mind. Expanding domestic weapon pr weapon production might allow certain export opportunities. A longer road to cash in other ways and anarchy. Also, recycling. Intellectuals. Cool. Supplying demand is pretty good. Mm. 
good karma. Elite. Karma will increase. I think that's the supply and demand is the main one we definitely want to do. Because she still has bad karma. She needs neutral karma. The six is trading dock. The board of the sixes represents underutilized potential for a royal's economy. Most trade might come to royal through land routes, but expanding the docks might allow for a safer alternative, at least for those who can afford a boat. Gek, clearings in a royal. And then we'll probably do wealth as health. Lower tariffs? Nope. Just as maneuvering has left the tribal council with more than enough in her coffers. Maybe. Uh, it's just the other members of the council getting to her, but she's beginning to realize that the strength of a tribe does not solely rest on the power of its leaders. Reinvestment in royal can help everyone, and most importantly, herself. But Dimitri's devices. What device? Dimitri smiled and lightly juggled the old cold metal box to the uninitiated. It appeared to be nothing more than an odd contraption marked by buttons and dials on the surface. To Dimitri, though, this piece of metal was a culmination of years of work. It originally came across the idea during the time spent at Happy Camp with the Packers. It had been a hobby of his since then, tuning, fiddling, and tampering both with the device and by extension the environment around it. Given the present circumstances, he now helped to use the device on the land which had birthed it. The forest fire scarred much of the northern reaches, northern and northern reaches, and the wanton destruction affected the Packers' psyche. Using the device to help regrow the forest could be seen as useful just for good faith, creating trust between the wary people and a royal. The device was also fully modular, meaning it could be used as a punishment of sorts. To incorrectly, it could cause a destructive level of growth, overrunning settlements, and perhaps even killing the slow or unlucky for those in need. Umbra, negative five. Lose coercion, more Packer influence. Um, kill them all. Nah. That's, I mean, I'd like to, but. I'm sure I'll play a royal a third time eventually again someday, so I'll probably do that then. Secure the border. Uh, yeah, investment packers. I don't lose any more stability. This one will be fine enough. Uh, Target prisoners. Dynamic tactics integration. Uh, Shit, there's the logistics. Ooh, why can we do this one? Oh, we need the technology for that one. Frontland platoons. Oh boy. Minus 10. Oh goodness. I think I'm going to go for quality for now. Cell usage goes down, supply usage goes down, more breakthrough, heart attack. You know, this is really good for output, and we could really use more output. But still. Anyways. <coughs> Kept paying to the best of her ability from the chosen one. Chose a success as a royal trade manager. Came both from the strong negotiation skills and un uh, under the table dealings. Chitsa made a subtle contact with the raider and bandit gangs that harassed trades approaching royal from the south and offered them a deal. They take their business elsewhere instead of robbing traders traveling north from the den to Klamath, all in exchange for a hefty yearly sum. With one swift blow, Chitsa managed to both remove Klamath as a serious trade competitor and help a royal prosper. A royal prosper. While the deal has been in effect for years, Chitsa has recently reevaluated its stipulations. In a secret letter sent to the west to west to doors, Chitsa explained a new aspect of the contract. Increase the plunder to still to maybe take the route north. Nice. 35% will be fine enough. Um, let's get rid of the battlefields. Might as well, since we had enough power there. A few refugees, not many. Old country. Uh, exploit the Packers. We might do that later. Uh, close out of that one. Political actions would be good to do as well. Uh, don't care about that. Followers aid. Yeah, whatever. And you guys are just kind of hanging out, having a good old time. Um, I don't trust Eureka, so come down here. And we'll need to invest in our soldiers a little bit more. We have infantry armor, fire teams. We need more robots. We really could use more robots. And we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm as well. Which is always a great thing. Yeah, look at all those infantry divisions we're making. We might delete them eventually, but for now, let's increase what? Trap plane tactics would be good. Uh, Mega saws would be good for infantry for now. But really, I want these to be at the top and go to five. Lightweight metals are not bad. Monoplane. Ooh, oh, that's a little bit way too ahead of time for us. Engineering, that's better to do that. Primitive radio, nice. Go and do that one too, I don't care. And we're building up roads. I need a, more military factories. Thank you, thank you. Wait to improve you a little bit later as well. Trade rest stops. Of course, we still got a lot to do here, but that's not bad overall. Yeah, they have power armor, good god. Enclave Remnants. Can't wait until we get down there. We'll point and play, the, play as them. Um, we need over 40% conversion. Promote peace. Uh, oh, there we go. Now I've got the scrap bots. That's good. Yeah. I want to do this one, but we don't have enough robot divisions to make it worthwhile yet. Got up over dam. Arroyan Roads. As a gek secured the Arroyo people's survival, the Chosen began to instruct Arroyans to build roads into the wasteland. Constructed quickly to promote a rapid increase in trade. 
The roads have since begun to fall into disrepair. Already relatively small to begin with, the roads begin to collapse and be overtaken by the passing wilderness. While still serviceable for our royal's current level of trade, any increases in traders would first require an expansion to repair the road system. Tish has promised to spear the rebuilding efforts, but now faces a choice on how to deal with the recruiting the manpower needed for an expansion. The efforts seem to be net positive economically, but fair wages could be buying the workers' loyalty and a more permanent support of chits among the populace, but... <clears throat> A more brutal oversight of the road building would complete the road faster, whatever lives it may cost. Or, of course, Chitsu could simply decide to allow the effort to proceed as is, or with whatever rewards so that'll bring. Better be feared than love, and why not love? Be loved as well. They will work to their bones, and my guards will make them work some more. We've created extensive enough plans already. I like the stability. The stability one's not bad. We're manipulative, though. Um, that, oh, we're cruel. So that's fine. Go ahead and increase our karma. Our interrogation report. So far, our interrogation has suffered from a lack of focus. During the war, the enemy soldiers who surrendered were brought into makeshift camps set up in Grand Pass. Jewelers from Maxsec were brought in to oversee the camps, but were surprised by the lack of escape attempts. Most prisoners sat defeated and dejected throughout the quarters, mindlessly taking the meals offered. They rarely made conversation, even to each other, making our interrogations an awkward affair. Our officers aren't sure if they should get under their skin or try and appeal to their homesickness. Whatever approach we choose will no doubt dictate the information we manage to extract. Offer amnesty. Massive bonus here. Well, we already have 45. Sure, why not? 15% was pretty good, though. Searching the graveyards. The army contingent sent to investigate the battlefields have indicated a number of surprising discoveries. First, evidence in indicates that each pact of warband almost includes a druid who were chosen for tactical prowess or in fanatical, fanatical devotion to some higher cause, but most were located in the rear of the warband, and again, the warriors held them in high regards. This is all part probably we'll be able to glean from the battlefields, but our investigators have noticed a small number of warbands still active in the region. We could order a soldier to track him down, potentially preventing them from becoming a future threat, but there's no guarantee that this strategy will pay off. It's coercion. Influence. Well, I guess for this time we can get some coercion. Interrogation Report 146. It wasn't easy to break through prisoners' mindless pondering. Our investigators originally theorized that inattention was a trained defense mechanism, taught to, to make them resist to torture. However, after we managed to communicate with the prisoners, we learned that their perception of the situation couldn't be further from reality. These warriors have been brainwashed to believe that surrendering to an enemy is sacrilege, and that any do so will be punished by the Packers' four spirits. That's a tribalistic nonsense, but these lies seem to have a tight hold on the most Packers' warriors. It seems that a group of druids are the source of this fanaticism. We'll investigate the matter further. Finally, a breakthrough. War comes in new. The news from the Packers' former territory has been increasingly hopeful for the past few weeks. The mistrust of the populace has begun to ebb away, slowly being replaced with an uneasy acceptance of our soldiers and doctors. Our diplomatic overtures to the tribal leaders have borne even more fruit. Various influential Packers have agreed to accept that their forest is now part of our territory, so long as they respect their independence and freedom of the movement within it. Our fear of renewed war and presence since we took control of the Packers' home seems to have faded. It finally ends. All lies in four ways, though. While well, the answer has begun to fully take on the mantle of the truly fellow Californian Republic, a world has grown to consolidate most of Southern Oregon. Both nations, while they're slowly gripping growing empires, have focused on four ways as a potential source of economic support. A natural junction for traders traveling from Oregon to California. Four ways provide safe harbor for wealthy souls, taking a generous cut in the process. Despite their amassed wealth, four ways are being slowly torn into two different directions. Towards a powerful NCR in the south and upstart a world in the north. A world will prevail in uncovering the truth. It was no easy task, but we did manage to fully uncover the truth of the Packer society. Their seemingly harmless semi-nomadic communities were, in truth, overseen by an elite ring of druids. These druids oversaw a woodland religion that came to infiltrate almost every aspect of Packer life, turning a naturally reclusive people into religious fanatics. The tribal religion ostensibly promoted a strong respect for nature, but in reality was used by the druidic elites to accumulate power. Grandpa Figley's arrival marked a shift in the goals. He was already close with many of them and slowly managed to convince the inner circle that Arroyo posed a serious danger to the power. So, the night before the attack, a small group began a fire that quickly spread through the north of northern reaches. The inner circle issued a unanimous proclamation in the hours after. Arroyo was responsible from there the rest is history. Actually, they had some good ideas. Also, I am just finding on other apostles, which would put us in war with uh, Cholworn. We'll see if that actually is a good idea or not, but whatever. So, four ways. Four ways, four ways, four ways. We have a lot of coercion. More coercion in the four ways? Sure, why not? I'm only going to do coercion. Um, what? Uh, we're out of manpower, so... Why not? <clears throat> oh, here we go. Uh, I remember doing this last time. This took forever, and it wasn't very good for us. RO is coercion. Coercion by border guards. Strength coercion. Remove a city? Strong influence. Um, negotiations. Gain influence. Aggressive negotiations. Well, we do have enough command power. Well, that's not bad. Just be inspirational. Just, everyone should be inspirational. So now I'm going to shove you guys over here. 
and we'll do that. We'll do this. Let's see, we can't do anything here, even though we can click on that. Um, so we are going to be making CNC robots, and I didn't know what this was. But let's first do this. We did health as wealth. We deal with all sorts. Uh, yeah, the best approach to diplomacy requires a neutral outlook. Judging yourself is uh, morally righteous. We're looking down at others. I suck up snobs willing to disagreement. Oh, I can't do this one now. Oh, I could have done this one earlier. Oh, dang it. Well, whatever. Could have gained more coercion that way. Support the gunrunners. God dang it. But it's 15 caps. It's like nothing. So it doesn't even really matter. Um, Good karma. Good karma, huh? Gek clearing in Arroyo. One of the immediate benefits of the Gek was its cleaning of needles forests. Or needless forests and boulders to make space for air of the land. The device's power is long tap, but our builders can follow in his footsteps, making them room for further industrial expansion. Yeah, not bad. I'm going to do that one too because I don't really care. I'll get that one too because I don't really care too much. Oh, we actually need more guns, huh? Getting more of these. Let's see. We're just building up roads right now. We probably are. Another infantry division. Which I need to make more. It's so cheap, it's so easy to make infantry divisions. Uh, there we go. Provide economic support. More coercion. I want high coercion. Thirty-five percent. It's not enough. Let's get the border. Go down too. That's fine. Define high coercion. Hardness. Oh, let's go to robotics since I really want to use them in this campaign. It's all ahead of time though, which sucks. So I don't want to do that stuff just yet. Vehicles. Um, mobile recon support. Sure, why not? We'll see if we actually use that in the end. Yeah. I like aggressive negotiations. But yeah, we'll do this one definitely. Sixes and sevens. Build a bigger pass. Grants pass is usually one of the most. It's some of the most unhospitable land or territory. Unfortunately, our GEC was used primarily in the Quarry Royal area. Leaving the past is a rugged area with little value. Manual labor can change that, but of course it'll take some time. Aggressive negotiations due to high coercion. Because right now, we have 45%. So that's high coercion. Interesting. We'll immediately go to war with them. It'll lower our karma. Um, let's wait. Give us four days, then we'll go to war with them, and then we'll see what we can do about that. Alright, so now we can begin with some negotiations. And I guess we do this one too. Ooh, no stockpiles. Ooh, trade tariffs. Chitta has come far since she began those order began to order those ball players. She now commands an army of traders that all of us wear loyalty to her and will certainly continue to expand that empire further. <coughs> Excuse me. Can we just go in? Oh, we get our allies in too. They're not allowed to say no to us. That's going to put us into war with NCR eventually, probably too. And Eureka. Yeah, 55% is fine. That's that's more than enough. Another trust society, no. Keep these guys in place, don't let them move. Don't let these guys move at all. You know, the normal stuff. Burn our normal, there. If we need more manpower, we can just do this. Just cut them all down. Cut them and gut them. There you go, nice. And we're going to cut off last and hopefully. There you go. Cut these guys off over here too. Which would be nice. Very nice. Of course, I would like to get this guy. More attack would be nice. We need more defense though, eventually. Except for too much attrition. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a desert. What do you expect? There you go. They have nowhere to move. Now, can we improve our land doctrine? More stuff over here. Yeah, I don't want to because we'll need that anyways. Nice. There you go. Nice. And head down here. We lost only 19, which is pretty good. Pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Oh, the false defense. That's a smart idea. I mean, I'd do that too. So overall, we still need to do Eureka, which is going to be a huge pain in the tuckus. And Lawson will be ours. And they're dead. Goodbye. And goodbye. Thank you for playing. Feeling pretty good. Come up here. We should be able to take these guys up relatively easily. But then again, I've been wrong before. Um, 
That's a lot of under new management. New signs hung from the old Brian trading post today. The old flag that used to hang from the old church seems to have been replaced. The four colors, the four paths, gone to the morning sun. Instead of yellow 13, now signals your arrival in Royal territory. If it suits you, it suits you. How, much, how many caps do we actually have? 17. Can we improve? Yes. Good. Level 5. Increase it. Very good. Um, yeah, we're about to be good to get. Yeah, this that thing's glitched. It's totally glitched right now. Um, but I do want to improve this. So, okay, excellent. So I didn't know about this. This is 4.0 update. I've not used robots before, but if you come over here, this CNC attachment, the scrap bot, is actually over here. And it improves your ability quite a bit. It requires a little bit more supply, but gives you... Oh, suppression is actually really good. Suppression bonus is very good, actually. Gives you breakthrough, gives you defense, gives you soft attack and heart attack. I'm not... I don't think anyone's ever talked about this, but this actually adds more organization, which is very impressive, and slightly more armor, and uses less as less cell usage requires five manpower and 15 bots so overall this seems pretty darn good more organization is always handy and it helps out with armor so i'm definitely going to be including those on my divisions now uh, obviously we don't have enough but you know whatever um oh, i thought it was the top there for the top our trade leader uh, let's do that one too not bad oh we're demobilizing are we oh it's because our stability it, wait, stability is negative seven percent. Wait, what? Advanced small tree. All right, build some more if you can. Faster, faster, faster. Uh, what else? The flesh is weak. Oh uh, god, the flesh is definitely weak. More armor, more hardness. That's stuff we like. Stuff we love. And metal stockpiles. Oh, metal stockpiles. Six to seven. Just to toss another leaf at the end of the bin behind her. The advertisement deals you've been presented with so far seem lackluster best. Most try to directly emulate the new Reno style, coming across as sarcastic at best. Sixes to sevens, really? How's that going to attract migrants? Build a bigger pass, of course, which we read earlier. News from Eureka. Arroyoans were shocked when they learned of a massive explosion that rocked the Eureka point yesterday. Mostly considered the small area a relative stable one, preoccupied with more mercenary schemes and internal conflicts. This presumed attack occurred at the heart of the Eureka port, killing numerous fishermen returning home from a long day of work. Eureka's reliance on the sea for food production means that this was no, likely no accident, and instead the work of a hostile actor. Who could have done this without his first patient? Every now and then, Dimitri would think back to his first patient. He hadn't been a full-fledged doctor back then, only a student. Just experienced enough to take the lead on prescribing a treatment, while far too novice to see a patient alone. The patient told Dimitri that he'd been beaten by a gang of thugs in an alley near his home. Shocked, Dimitri and his superior. Saw the man's wounds, gave him pain medication, and sent him home. Dimitri, however, was outraged. While he wished him to immediately report the attack, his supervisor dissuaded him, arguing that Dimitri's job was to treat the patient, and justice was another man's duty. Even after all these years later, thinking of that response infuriated Dimitri. How did that really make any sense? How could someone be blind enough to simply rely on others to do the right thing? Isn't that attitude only treating the symptom rather than the cause? He knew that not every follower thought like a superior. Still, that day had shaken his faith in the organization that trained him, setting him on his present course. The holier-than-thou attitude of the followers might be their downfall, but he wouldn't let it be his. Another day, another step forward, and the doctor's in. Dimitri was glad to see this tireless work to integrate himself into the roaring troubles beginning to pay off. He began to work in earnest after the meeting adjourned, keenly aware that whatever funding he needed to, uh, for research or construction projects was now his. A great tribe, Dimitri learned quickly that Arroyans were deeply proud people. They see themselves as the descendants of one hero being led by another. That pride may not be ill-founded, but it could at times be at odds with reality. Despite the Gek's work, Arroyo lacks serious economic power, especially when compared to the NCR, and we have gone to war with the Apostles just because... Why not? Um, but now... We, with the Four Ways, we'd have no influence. So, we have no influence... Oh no, that's Four Ways. Eureka, we have influence and coercion, but you know what, it's just easier to do this one. Um, gain influence, get, lose coercion. Well, we're just being a very coercive group here right now. Um, do that. There you go. Actually, this one... When removed... Yeah, it's fine. And we're going to go to these guys anyway, so... Let's see what happens. We should do okay. Maybe not here, because they do have special forces, which suck, but whatever. Should be able to win against the militia. Should be able to push him pretty easily from there. And then, yeah, just keep them kind of all busied right now. Keep them busy bodies. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Can we actually continue doing this? Yes, we can. More growth. Yes, please. That'd be awesome, awesome. The doctor is in, though, with a great tribe. Quite a great tribe. Um, after that one, we want to do the one where it requires us to be... We have good karma. We need recycling immediately next. Um, economic growth. Great. A flourishing society. 
care, attention, and planning of all led to Arroyo's present greatness, to the Arroyans 40 years ago. This level of advancement would seem likely like a totally different world, even those who lived through these times can hardly believe their eyes and marvel at modern Arroyo. Nice. Uh, recycling, huh? There we go. Get her done. I guess I have no ports, so it's probably be okay to do this too. Just continue training and whatnot. Um, they're just going to. They do have some modelers, so. though. Interesting. And that's a really good for RMXP as well, so. So, so if you guys go ahead and use that for now. And. Yeah, that's all we can do. I saw special forces, whatever. Yeah, that's really good for RMXP. It's very good for RMXP, actually. Okay, use a little bit of manpower. Make a propulse. Oh. If the Yurik is not part of the NCR, they will be forced to either attack or become a puppet. Oh, crap. Um, in the meantime, at the very least, grab some anti tank on you guys. Be extremely important. Get rid of all that. Finish off this war now, for the most part. Oh, <laughs> look at these Marlars. I love that. Uh, we can't pierce them, but their organization will drop hard enough that it doesn't matter too much. Oh, God, we have to fight Eureka. I hate fighting Eureka. Get all the power armor and whatnot. My luck. Oh, good God. We're gonna need more manpower, too. I might actually delete some divisions so we can have more manpower ourselves, so... We'll see. Arago? Yes. Good. There you go, nice. Good. Almost 500 losses versus 1,000. They do have armor, but we cannot pierce quite yet. Over here, your inspirational robots. Ooh, idiot savant's not bad either. Plus, the body stuff is pretty good. Commando's not bad either. Robotic expert, yeah. Just be an expert. Just be, just be perfect, that's all I ask. Build bonds. Let's get the border. Um, sure, I guess. Why not? So they've got nowhere to move. Can't pierce them, unfortunately, but whatever. And now, every single tile is busy attacking or defending. Which is a good thing. I just found nothing. Are you kidding me, bro? Bro. <clears throat> what are we paying you for, then? Yeah, we don't do not get enough political power. Good God, exerting influence sucks. It sucks so much. Oh, we can't do this one yet, huh? Oh, we're building a great society first, whatever. Infrastructure clearing forests. Medford, school building. Dimitri has been in Arroyo long enough to see one generation of Arroyans reach adolescence. A detached subject for much of the population, but tribal schools start, uh, stand to provide a superior, far superior education to whatever learning exists in Arroyan homes. There's going. Do it like this. <coughs> You'll be able to do it quickly, hopefully. Come on. And there he goes. We can pierce him. Goodbye. Nice. Ultimately, that'll give us more, um, Map and whatnot over there. Uh, Lost Hills. Whoa. Okay, well, whatever. Special Forces, we could do that, but whatever. Influence for Eureka. We're working on it. More money, please. Not bad. Metal working. It's alright. Um, in the meantime, go ahead and get the next level of this. That's going to be super important. Excellent. Give you some more of that too. Nice. Train, 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 because we are going to die here. And it's going to suck. A lot. Can you get more output first? Yeah, keep getting more output. School building, um, clearing forests. We need to have a little, he's a good car, so we can get that one done for the industrial planning. Industrial planning. 
agriculture expansion. The ever-growing population required a wider base of agriculture to draw from, and the newly cleared land could act as a perfect base for it, clearing forests. A number of outlying forests in the region only serve to hamper population growth. Now, normally, they're simply bastions for mutated creatures or bandits, if not reclusive ghoul hideouts. The Final Struggle Eureka's facade of outrage is boiled over. Whatever trickery Port Master Smith orchestrated to enrage the Eurekan public against the Royal successfully turned the tragedy at their port into a full-blown war. Our people, while still unsure why Royal has been blamed, tend to defeat what we've been fought for to the last man. The past three years have been spent in building alliances and control over the region around us, growing an empire to keep our people protected. We can't and won't let all that work just a boy now. Once again, war? They know. They can't win. And we did sanitation exploration too. For the Great War, every city and town had a working sanitation system. The idea that Stark. That idea is a stark impossibility now, except for in a royal itself. Better sanitation, therefore better healthier people pay dividends over time. Clearing force, a number of outlying forces in the region only serve to hamper population growth. Normally they're simply bastions for mutated creatures or bandits, if not reclusive ghoul hideouts. So now we're war with these guys. And I'm not looking forward to this, to be honest. Um, I mean, if we could just encircle them, that'd be great, but we probably cannot. So let's call our guys in, and if this goes poorly, they probably will, but whatever. Uh, we'll do the best we can. If we don't get Arcata, that'd be great. Move in just a little bit, because they will get a crap ton of divisions. Um, keep these guys in place for now if you can. Uh, we gotta move in now, so. Take the territory if you can. If not, that's okay. We have no manpower, though, but we're just not good, but whatever. Alright, so you guys hold. Alright. Hold. You guys actually might be able to win here, too, actually. We'll see. Because I do want them to attack our lines, but our divisions are very weak, obviously. So. You guys are attacking. I would not do that if I were you, but whatever. Yeah, now they're attacking us a little bit too here. You guys can go there too if you want. You guys go down there. Uh, you're definitely going to get pushed back, but whatever. That'd be good for army XP and whatnot, but, you know. Wow, that militia division is going to DIE. And I'll probably go to waste that militia as well. I mean, we could take more territory, but that just means we have less manpower. And we need more manpower. Good god. Do we need more manpower or what? I wish they would stop attacking like crazy. Uh, power armor? I don't know. Infantry will do okay. Special forces. We don't have any special forces. Wait to get up here, probably. Um, we're not even making any divisions, and we're out of manpower, which is god awful. Up here, resistance is doing okay. Let's create an agency, help lower resistance, maybe. <clears throat> Alright, so we got two. Cool. And. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you might be able to do this, maybe. Bring these guys on board as well. There you go. Don't take too much first, because they do have up to 36 divisions. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess, really. Conference. Well, we might do a lot of this off screen too. We'll see. You know what? I, I don't mind holding because we only guard this tile, which is not bad. And if they want to attack us a whole bunch first, ruin their manpower as well. I'm kind of okay with that. Oh, they're out of manpower already, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> so we'll do this. Um, if I can, we'll do exploring the land, but we'll see. But a royal top of hill. Everything Dimitri has done has been to further a royal splendor. He has put up with distrust and misunderstanding for all decades. And to all to make this quiet northern land into a paradise for its people. Finally, it seems as if his work is starting to pay off. Road building. Even within a royal, small towns can sometimes be entirely separate from nearby population centers. An organized road building plan could integrate the entire population within. A large communications network strengthening their tribal identity. Further industrial planning. Going forward, a royal needs a, needed a plan. Much of its early industry had been scrapped together. Similar to the rest of the wasteland, Demetrius' education had taught him the value of planning ahead, a lesson which he hoped to impart on the Orwellian people. And the Army Research Division. Some of the military research or military research as a tool only useful in the construction of more powerful uh, uh, weapons. Unlike his former teacher, Dimitri sees a purpose in war, but still maintains that army research should be a secondary priority. But I think I'll do a lot of this off screen, really start grinding them down before they get extra secret divisions and stuff like that. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see what else we can do with the Royal. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.